Do we really need to, quote unquote, get used to things? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. It's one of those questions that I get frequently. Uh, the way I describe it in the companion article is I responded to a question frequently regarding Windows 7 slash 8 slash 10 slash 11 that ended with, why did Microsoft do this when everybody wanted the familiar old XP slash 7 slash 8 slash 10, right? Whatever previous version they were complaining or wanting. So I had two responses to that. One is to simply point at my article, why ask why? <laughs> because honestly, that's an unanswerable question. They have reasons. The reasons are legitimate from a business perspective, but they don't always seem that way. I get it. But I also said, it's not everybody. In fact, I would claim that in all of those cases, the transition from 7 to 10, from XP to 7, from 10 to 11, the majority of people who transition actually have come to get used to it. They've come to even like it. The response, of course, was the user should never have to get used to it. I don't disagree. You're absolutely right. The scenario where you are finding a change is something that is jarring or hard to understand or a feature or functionality that somehow changes or is removed. You're right. You shouldn't have to get used to that kind of stuff. But that's only in an ideal world. We don't live in an ideal world. I don't need to tell you that. As a result, yes, stuff is going to happen that you're going to need to get used to. One of the things that frustrates me about this scenario is that, honestly, you and I, we get used to things all the time. The automobile is my greatest example because I swear, no two cars of different makes, different models, or even different models within the same make have the controls, the dashboard controls in the same place. Every new car involves a little bit of learning, a little bit of understanding. Okay, on this car, the air conditioning is controlled this way. On this car, it's controlled a completely different kind of way. On this car, the headlight switch is over here. On this car, the headlight switch is actually on the column. Uh, I've even had situations where the turn signals are on the wrong side, which is really interesting to get used to. And of course, it's fairly obvious that this big difference between right-hand driving and left-hand driving is a huge, huge thing that if you're traveling in both countries that do this, yeah, you have to get used to it. And you know what? I don't hear anybody complaining. Every new car that comes out, every time you purchase a new car, be it a used car or a new car, you're doing this. You're getting used to stuff. You're used to getting used to stuff. And yet, when a small menu gets changed in an application that everybody uses, oh my goodness, do I hear complaints. So, that's one of the reasons that it frustrates me because you've proven you can get used to things. All we really need to do is potentially open ourselves to, yeah, okay, this is something I can get used to. A friend of mine actually says, you know what? I may not like it in the beginning. I may even get angry about it, but I know that I'll figure it out. I know that I'll get used to it. That's great. I'm not saying don't be angry. I'm not saying don't be frustrated. I'm not saying that you should just intuitively get all this stuff instantly. But I am saying that you have a proven track record of getting used to things. And honestly, your computer is no different. Now, one of the things that I do get pushback on this metaphor is that, well, yeah, cars change, but they don't change that often. My computer's changing almost every year. So yes, the time scale for technology in general is generally much shorter than the time scale for automobiles. But it doesn't change the fact that 
yeah, things change in your car, in your next car, in your computer, in the next version of the operating system. Another piece of pushback I get is that, but they don't stop supporting my car. Actually, they do. If you've got a 40-year-old car, good luck trying to find even gasoline that will work properly in that car. You need to find additives. If you need parts, you need to go to almost secondhand stores or junkyards or whatever to find what you need for that older car. You can keep running that car. It'll just be harder to maintain. And in a lot of ways, it might not even be as safe because of all of the safety improvements that have been made on cars since then. But absolutely, every car that's on the road today will someday be unsupported by the original manufacturer. That's just the way it goes. And it is certainly on a different scale. Another piece of pushback? Not all cars succeed. Well, yeah. I've often likened uh, Microsoft Bob, a piece of operating, it's literally an operating system that failed very hard to the Ford Edsel. Not everything's going to succeed. That's also a part of what's happening here with both automobiles and software. It's possible that Windows 11 is the next Edsel. I don't think it will be. As I hear from people, more and more people are using it. More and more people are getting used to it. But it could be. It could be the next failure. If you believe the even odd pattern for success and failure on Microsoft operating systems, this is in the failure mode. But I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to do just fine. So I'm not saying that you must get used to anything. You want to keep using your old version of software, please keep using your old version of software. Understand the ramifications. I talked about that in a, an immediately preceding article. But you have that control. Nobody is forcing you to upgrade your operating system. Nobody is forcing you to upgrade your machine. You are very, very welcome to keep using what you're comfortable with. But I do think that in the long run, you will be happier and safer if you continue to get used to those things that at first seem frustrating or even angering. For updates, for comments, for links to related articles and more, visit askleo.com 14854. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.